Yes, on, on, on the surface, uh, peace and war look like opposites. Um, however, as I understand just war, Christian just war thinking, uh, peace is the point. Uh, um, um, a just peace, uh, a just reconciliation, uh, um, must be the, the goal at which justified war ends. Uh, unfortunately, in this set of circumstances, uh, we, we need to fight before we can reconcile. Uh, so I, I don't see any, any contradiction um, um, between just war theory and a concern to uh, effect reconciliation. Um, the, the other point to make is that, that, that I understand uh, the word forgiveness to refer to two different things, uh, which we don't normally distinguish, and I think we need to do that. Um, it refers to what I call the forgiveness as absolution, excuse me, forgiveness as compassion at the beginning, and forgiveness as absolution at the end. Um, so the idea is this. Um, you injure me. Uh, I'm a Christian. I must respond to you with the forgiveness as compassion in the sense that um, I can't regard you as the devil incarnate. I can't regard you as subhuman. Uh, you remain uh, a fellow sinner. Uh, you've done me wrong. I also do things wrong. We have that in common. So a certain compassion. and and. Maybe you did me wrong for reasons that you could barely control, because I often do things I barely understand. Uh, so we, we are subject to social and historical forces sometimes we barely understand and have no control over. So I have a certain compassion for you. I think that is obligatory. Uh, what I ought not to do, however, is to um, um, engage in forgiveness as absolution toward you until you have repented. I can't say, Brian, I forgive you. I'll forget what happened in the past. Let's carry on as if nothing happened, unless you have repented. Why not? Uh, because if you haven't repented, then you have no idea that you did wrong. And uh, that means that you are liable to repeat what you did wrong again, which means I can't rationally trust you. How can I trust you if you have shown uh, no understanding of what you did wrong, and it is quite likely you'll do it again? I, c I can't trust you. Um, now, um, between forgiveness as compassion and forgiveness as absolution, um, should come what I call legitimate resentment. You've done me wrong, Brian. I, I have compassion for you as a fellow sinner. Um, I, I'm going to moderate my anger, but I'm angry. You did me wrong. Uh, you destroyed something valuable. You destroyed my trust, and, and you deserve a little anger. You deserve to know this is not acceptable. Um, and uh, in circumsta circumstances, uh, a certain payback uh, um, um, a, a certain hostile response, which is what retribution is, I think is important, not because I want to make you suffer for the sake of it, but because I want to communicate uh, what you did cannot stand. If we're going to be reconciled, you need to get that. Um, um, and uh, so, I, as I understand it, between compassion, forgiveness as compassion and forgiveness as absolution, there can be appropriate resentment and appropriate retribution. Now, w what this uh, allows when we think about political affairs is that um, it could be appropriate, uh, uh, it could be possible for a state um, who, which, has received, which has suffered some, uh, some um, armed attack, let's say France, after the terrorist attacks last November. Um, it, it would be absurd, I think, for France to say to Islamic State, we forgive you, uh, we'll carry on as if nothing happened. That would just be absurd. What might, wouldn't be absurd was, would be to say that France ought to show Islamic State a certain forgiveness as compassion in the sense that um, France must not regard the members of Islamic State as subhuman. They remain fellow humans uh, to some extent, deep down in history. Uh, maybe France was involved in creating the conditions which have given a rise to Islamic State. And maybe uh, within Islamic State's warped view of the world, there are real grievances that deserve to be addressed. Uh, uh, that, that recognizing that, I would regard as, a, as an act of forgiveness, as compassion. That could be politically plausible. Th that's one, one advantage of, of thinking of forgiveness in, in, in terms of these two different things. I, I embedded in that, is there a theory of punishment as communication? Yeah, for the yeah, sake of forgiveness yes. or reconciliation or something, it sounds that, like? That, that's right. Um, I, I, um, as I see it, 
the point of punishment can never be simply to make uh, the, the, um, the perpetrator suffer. There's no point in suffering in itself. Uh, and indeed, to want you to suffer because of what you did, just because I want to see you suffer, would be an act of vengeance. Uh, so, uh, uh, and um, therefore, punishment cannot be retributivist. Um, uh, but we do, we do tend to think of retribution and punishment in retributivist terms as simply a kind of vengeful desire to see someone suffer. Um, I don't think that's um, a justified form of punishment. However, punishment can be designed, uh, as I suggested, um, um, through a hostile reaction to an injustice to, to, to try and communicate to the perpetrator this is something that is not acceptable, cannot stand, has to change if we're going to be reconciled. So yes, punishment as a and retribution even as a, an act of responsible communication, uh, I think is is right and necessary. As an opportunity then for the perpetrator to recognize and repent and, and exactly. ideally pursue some sort of reconciliation. Exactly, as a, as a stimulus right. to repent. Uh, and if you repent, I can then say, I forgive you, I absolve you, let's go on as before. Uh, the thing is, if you, if you don't communicate to the wrongdoer, that they've done wrong, and, and, and that communication, I think, has to have a certain hostile tone to it. You need to know, I'm not happy with this, seriously not happy with this. If I don't do that, I rob you of a chance to learn and to change. Uh, and, and oddly, oddly, if I don't do that, I fail in love.